you. We've made it to Burnham, really, really last minute. Um, we literally decided yesterday that we were gonna come to Burnham. Um, the tides were wrong, but as Ian said, you can't spend your life waiting for the right tides. So what's normally a seven hour trip, took nine. <laughs> At one point we were doing 2.1 knots, but we did it. Um, yeah, last minute, because we've had a little bit of a problem with me. Um, I was actually diagnosed with breast cancer back in March, and I had surgery two weeks to today. Um, we don't know the results yet, so I can't give you any prognosis or anything. We've having to wait 18 days um, to know what and where and what treatment, so this is hopefully taking our mind off it. Which has worked, because while we were sailing today, I was completely back to being normal Hannah, not poorly Hannah. Obviously, I can't use my arm, Ugh, probably shouldn't lift it, because I've had lymph node surgery as well. Um, they tell you not even to lift a cup of tea. So let's hope they don't watch this film of me pulling the mane down, but it's fine. I'm held together with glue, and it's holding. <laughs> So yeah, Burnham is where we are. We've booked a um, table tonight in the Oyster Bar pub, um, which is where we're walking to. We've already been into town today since we got here, did the park run, did the dog, and now we're just walking back. So no doubt we will take you with us tomorrow to show you what we get up to. Right, well Burnham wouldn't be Burnham without our famous swing. Izzy can actually touch the ground herself now and Daddy is about four years older. <laughs> is Daddy cheating? <laughs> wow! <laughs> Winnie's last wee wee walk before bed and Izzy has got a ginormous frisbee. Whoa! <laughs> Which we don't seem to work out. No, they haven't managed to catch it yet. <laughs>
my god. <laughs> well, as usual, this is the first mirror I see because we don't have one. It's 6.06 .06 and we're leaving Burnham. Obviously, I can't help Ian because of my arm. He's doing really well. So the plan is, as soon as I can't actually pull anything or do anything proper anyway, I might just go back to bed for a bit with Izzy. He's already up. Can't really be quiet when you're leaving a marina. Very low. Very pretty. Noisy old motorboats any time in the morning. Anyway, the reason the camera's on is, look at this. Oh, you can't see it now with all the wash. Even though um, there's a lot of mud showing and it's only a couple of hours till low water, or not even that, hour and a half to low water, um, there's still a knot on a bit of tide running. Um, and it's quite a unique tide today uh, in that it goes below chart datum. I've never seen that before. Don't know if anyone else has. But um, if I just quickly show you. This isn't, isn't my only source of charts, uh, tides, but they all agree. So this is Burnham. It's 6.20, oh, low tide. It's a couple of hours to low tide, 8.45, but it actually is half a metre below chart datum. And there's precious little water around the Whitaker when you go out of here anyway. Um, we're on the crouch and when the crouch ends you end up in I think it's called the Whitaker Channel anyway it's a channel between the big mud banks and you go out for another couple of miles offshore to the Whitaker point and although you're miles offshore there's precious little water so precious little water with half a meter below chart datum could be interesting because um, we need a couple of meters to float so hopefully that won't be a problem anyway unlike coming here you see, coming here, let's move out the front, it's a bit quieter. You see, the journey here, it's a bank holiday, it's a bank holiday weekend in uh, the UK, it's Easter, and um, in the UK we traditionally get the Good Friday off and Easter Monday off as public holidays. So. It's the first sort of bank holiday of the year and the club often, if it's like it is now, it's later in the year, this year Easter, organises a cruise. And Bob, the guy who does all the organising, did a great job of organising a cruise, except everyone went, but the tides were all wrong and no one went on the cruise. Well, that's the difference between, if you like, a, in my eyes, the difference between a full-time cruiser and a part-time cruiser is a full-time cruiser can say the tides are all wrong or the wind's in the wrong direction I'll wait for another day when you're a part-time cruiser like we are and the forecast says it's going to be a sunny Easter weekend which never happens everyone in the UK will agree you might get the odd nice day at Easter but it's never a sunny weekend anyway it was a lovely sunny weekend this year we've got flat seas light winds okay not great for motor sailing in but you know perfectly good for traveling in but the tides are all wrong so we could have sat at home and said the tides are all wrong or we could have come out and as it happens, we've come out and coming here was a bit of a slog. You normally try to aim to get to the Whitaker, the point we were talking about, at low tide, because then you get swept all the way out through the, the Medway and the Thames up to the Whitaker on the tide, and then you get swept into the Crouch on the tide. Because the tides were wrong, because we left a, little, a couple of hours later and we really should have, um, oh, that arm's getting sore. Because <laughs> we left a couple of hours later and we should have, we ended up, with the slog against the tide all the way up there, um, getting pretty much the Whitaker at high water. So then we had to slog our way back into the crowd. So the whole journey took sort of three hours longer than it should have done. But, um, but it was all right, because it was a pleasant enough journey and we've had a great couple of days in Burnham. Uh, but now we've left early and now, because the tides are earlier here and because it's a couple of days later, so the tides are a couple of days later, we're now leaving at the perfect time to get out to the, the uh, Whitaker. So we're going to have an easy journey back because we're going to get swept out of the crouch on the tide and we're going to get swept all the way in through the Thames up the Medway on the tide. And it makes a big difference. There's even, like I say, there's a knot and a half tide running at the moment. 
and at its peak there was a good three knots of tide out in the uh, Thames when we were trying to beat our way up to the Whitaker, which when your boat is doing five and a half knots, say, is the difference between doing seven and a half knots and three knots, um, or two and a half knots. So imagine, yeah, it's three times the speed difference. So it's important. If only someone had made a film about tides, I could understand. Anyway, the problem we might have today, of course, is as I said, when we get out to the Whitaker today, there isn't going to be any water. And there, are, there always isn't much water out of the Whitaker. You always have to be careful cutting the corner, but there's normally, say, a metre above chart datum, and with half a metre below chart datum, there's going to be even less. So um, we shall see. Second World War pillbox over there. I don't know what that is behind it. Anyone know? There's all the seals basking in the mud. Not sure how much it's going to come out because I'm about to round in the little shop. I'm going over there to take a look. So that's the Whitaker beacon that we're going round. As impressive as it once was, I think it used to have a basket on it and everything. And of course it used to mark the spit, end of the spit of mud that, in this channel, but it's not really even in the right place anymore because the mud's moved. But it's still the landmark that we're heading towards that we've basically got to get round. Except we've got to go another mile or so further out to sea really on this low tide. So we've just got around the Whitaker, um, all quite painless, although it did get down to two metres for a large part. I had to kind of skirt the finger of mud, a bit touch and go, but you know, I could have gone further out, I guess. But, uh, but it doesn't matter, we're round. It's amazing, you go like 100 yards once you clear this bit of mud and it gets to 10 metres or something and uh, you're home dry. So um, now it is bang on low water, so um, half an hour or so the tide will start kicking in and it will sweep us all the way back home. So. Uh, can't see me turning the engine off any sign soon, but the jib's giving half a knot, so um, which is good, and we're uh, we're home in no time. watching a film. It's 14 degrees because it's still early and we're doing about six knots so it's not bad is it? Better than coming up here. Ian's bored playing the ukulele. Dolphin weather. I've been staring and staring out to sea and then I see a seal 30 foot from the boat. So I grab the camera and the seal goes down. I see. Still looking for dolphins. So we're nearly home because there's a Montgomery as normal. And right next to it. Some floating orange boys. There's three there. You can see them. And there's another three there. Yeah, no idea why. If anyone knows, let us know. If you can, because the chances are, as soon as Elizabeth's in this film, there'll be no comments again. So I apologise for that. 
It's not our decision, it's just YouTube being silly. But um, anyway, nearly home. to the moorings. Um, it's been really really good fun. I'm so pleased we made the effort. Um, I'm not sure how many people two weeks after surgery in two places um, <laughs> go on a boat but I haven't pulled that much and I've taken it easy for me so we should be fine. Um, yeah I'm really really pleased we did make the effort. We literally had a day's notice before we thought let's do it. Um, we would have liked more wind but maybe under the circumstances that's probably a good thing we didn't. We've motored there and back the boat behaved absolutely perfectly. Um, we are out all the time and we played in the park all day. How fantastic was that? Um, yeah, hopefully I'll see you soon. Happy sailing!